Jim, question? one one last question. Yeah. And I'm recording you here for the club, if you don't mind. We can strike it later if needed. The, the question is about the coherent signals that you mentioned earlier. The. What, the coherent signal. The. And what can you tell us about it? Much not by the questions, but uh, no. <laughs> 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 But is it, you're, we've actually detected some signal from somewhere, and it, right. we, we're not exactly if sure. If I talk yet. to you more about it, you know what I'd have to do to you all? Yeah. Yeah. No, you don't. I have to take you out to a steak dinner, and I can't afford it right <laughs> now. Uh, professors don't make that much money. Okay. But uh, ask me the question again. The question is the coherent signal. Yeah. Apparently, they believe they've received one coherent signal. What does coherent mean, anyway? Okay. Uh, when, when you look at... Well, a good case was the late 60s, Jodrell Bank in uh, England. Jodrell Bank was England's premier radio astronomy site. And in the 60s, radio astronomy really was an infant science, okay? But Jodrell Bank was a premier institution. And one of the young ladies, uh, one of the scientists was working there and uh, all of a sudden, bells started clanging and things like this because their computer that was attached to this, I think it was a VIC-20, uh, <laughs> was attached to this uh, radio system started uh, clanging and uh, the warning bell went off which said that in amongst the hash that you get, and it looks like a noise floor on a radio, okay? It's just hash. In that, all of a sudden, it was receiving something that was the time, there was a, 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 over a specific period of time, there was a frequency of signals, okay? And it was also a set RF frequency. And they went, oh my God, guess what we've got? And <laughs> so the government was called, and I guess MI5 was involved, and MI5 is like our FBI, but not their MI6, which is an international, like our CIA. Uh, MI5 uh, came in with the SAS, which is the Special elite Air. Special Forces of the, uh, uh, of the British Army. They came in and cordoned off Jodrell Bank, because they said, oh my God, we're receiving alien signals. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the very first time we heard a pulsar, which is the remnant of an exploded star. It's a neutron star about the size of Earth, but it has a hot spot on it, and it spins. Well, it's like a lighthouse beacon, and if my arm is the beacon, the Earth is right in that path. If the Earth was up here, we wouldn't hear it. But we were in it, and it went, And then they decoded a picture of Jodie Foster. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, that was our very first signal. But it really wasn't coherent. It was just a pulse. But what we've got now, and uh, we have something called a wow signal, and you can take a look at it on the internet. The wow signal actually had a very short set of characters that the computer was actually able to decipher. Now, what it meant, we don't know. Stars do not do that. We're actually looking at stellar emission that affects us. Cosmic rays and everything else are just hash. But we know how to decipher the hash and what it's doing in the star. But what we're receiving now is lines upon lines upon lines of actual coherent and coherent meaning uh, decipherable signals, um, like a language. I to read contact. Okay. You sure it's not a Chinese satellite? No. No? <laughs> no, because these are coming from star fields. Wow. Okay, because we do coordinate with the U.S. Space Command. Yeah. Because they they know every little piece of space debris that's out there. And just how much is that these days? What's that? That's in the billions of, billions of pieces, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Uh, the major pieces are in the thousands yeah. uh, still. 
you know, we're talking tens of thousands, but the fact yeah, is, is that you this get a is piece a star. About as heavy as this piece of yeah. paper, moving at thirty-five thousand miles an hour, and it'll go right through the ISS like a bullet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we have how we identify it. We say, oh my gosh, is this a satellite or not? The first thing we do is we take our telescope and we move it off axis, left and right, and we watch the power, okay? The strength of the signal. And then we move it up and down. So we wor work on the x-axis and the y-axis, and sure enough, if we get the same reading at the same point in space, we've got a celestial target. And we now have one major HAPCAT-1 that's the highest level of category that we have that we say we've got a possible uh, civilizations that's sending RF out into space. They're talking. And we have one here now in, uh, uh, that we can receive from the Northern Hemisphere. And there are other category, HAPCAT 2 and 3, but uh, HAPCAT 1 is the highest and the most probable for, you know, signals from ET, so to speak. And that's where the White House is having problems. Their genes are getting uh, shrunk on them because we're receiving these and NSA is going, and the other governments, by the way, too, are going, wait a doggone minute. U.S. is shutting down, we've got to pick up that slack, and what's, what's going on up here? So, Are they receiving this signal in multiple locations around the planet, or is it just... Yes, we have confirmed. That's what we do in astronomy. Um, astronomy is kind of different from other, let's say, the medical sciences and everything where there's patents involved. Well, there's patents involved in astronomy, but not like this. PhD dissertations and papers in astronomy, you don't want to keep the information to yourself in your little cubbyhole. So you can write a PhD dissertation and then defend it and get your PhD. We no longer do that. We have really, we've never done that. What we do is a PhD candidate asks all the other observatories to please confirm their sightings. And it could be, and I'm not talking SETI stuff, I'm talking whether it's some kind of strange anomaly in a center of a galaxy, things like this. We want confirmation because the PhD committee, the first thing they ask is they look through the paper and find out who else has confirmed these sightings? So in astronomy, we actually look for confirmation from other sites. We immediately pick up the phone. And, and I will call, for instance, Park or Canberra in Australia. I will call Jodrell Bank. And our whole network of NRAO here in this country, which we've got about six facilities, um, will say, hey, here's the right ascension and declination, which is like our longitude, latitude on Earth. But we'll say, hey, we've got this point in space at this frequency. We need confer confer uh, confirmation of what we're receiving. And when they start coming back and saying, yes, here's our reception report, things like this, then we can either have no confirmation, which means we got a problem with our equipment, or we've really got something there. So it's kind, of, it's kind of fun. So is the signal still available? If we wanted to tune in, if they wanted to tune in and detect it again, it's still there? Or is it yes. gone like the wow signal? No, no, that's the situation. These signals are starting to be received in a periodic uh, wife, such as a sitcom. will be on Wednesday night at 6 p.m. every week, okay? That's what this is happening. That, that's what's going on here. Are we finding them First time in history that we've had this happen. At it what's that? Are we finding them now because they're getting better at it, or yeah. are we finding them because they're new? 
I think because we're better at it, our equipment and everything, and that's one of the things I want to talk to you about on the SDR. Um, and at, at Green Bank especially, we're uh, the scientists, you know, we all gather together and we all talk over <coughs> root beer and uh, in the parking lot in the evening. Uh, <laughs> Except for that blind guy who can never find you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we discuss new technologies and everything, and it, again, it's the ham. The SDR is being investigated now as a way of trying to look at, for instance, receiving pulsars. You're talking a million bucks minimum to try to do that. We want to do it with this, yeah. cheap. And one thing we're looking at, and it was one of the engineers who's a ham, he says, you know, I'm getting into SDR. And so that's what we're looking at doing. And so it's pretty exciting, and that's what we're going to be doing in our lab. So I need to talk with you, Frank, about that. But anyway. Are you doing all so this stuff, QRP? What's this? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, <laughs> we're not sending signals out. Uh, we're doing that in Cal at a facility in California. Okay. Um, Good. So if they blast, but them, we're receiving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're we're just simply receiving. We don't we don't want to invite them here. Trust me. Well, we've been sending signals into space as long as we've been sending signals. Oh, yeah. yeah when you do QRP, yeah. that is still going into space. Yeah, but it's less likely to attract them. Yeah, yeah. We're saving yeah. the Earth. Well, or if they can decode it, and if they can decode things like uh, the <coughs> learning channel, to name one, here comes Honey Boo Boo, they will definitely stay away. That's yeah. the idea. That's, that's the purpose of it. They're I looking for they're intelligent life. And so far on Earth, it's been... The apes and the dolphins. So, you know, anyway, and but, uh, have and the hams. A, have you got an estimated distance on that? Two of the Habcats, one. One is at 1,500 light years. The one is 10,500 light years. And one light year is six trillion miles, approximately. Okay? Yeah, but when you can go through the, uh, through the ultimate universe, Shortcut. it doesn't take long. <laughs> Do you know that... It, it, it came out of Los Alamos that uh, we've been discussing, okay, you'll hear old scientists say, no, there's no evidence and everything, and that's crap. We have lots of evidence. Just talk to a B-52 pilot <laughs> who's been in that B-52 for 15,000 hours. Can tell you what they've seen. Most airline pilots will tell you what they have seen. Okay. Not on record, they won't. No, not on record. But anyway, the deal is this. The NSA governs everything ET. And there's a reason for that. We have still got to figure out how to get humans to Mars and back. And back healthy. Okay? If they've learned how to come from 10,500 miles here, and I don't mean radio signals, all right? How could they have done it? The only way we can figure out is taking <clears throat> space, let's say. Earth is here, and their system is here. They've learned how to fold space and touch each other, and they're here instantly. It's and Einstein had already said, if you studied his theory of relativity, that it could be done. We've already seen it happen. Um, take a look at, at the internet and look at something called the Einstein cross. Okay? So, anyway. And then, of course, the human species also entangled nuclei. Entangled. Um, yeah. And believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, all of this stuff does affect radio. Everything that's coming from space affects radio. Cosmic energy, you're being bombarded right now. Your bodies are being hit by particles from stars that have exploded billions of years ago. 